here, and welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play a Transport Fever 2 Free Mode Edition. In the previous episode, we basically started expanding our operations by including some newer locomotives, including the Alco FA-1 and B unit to handle our trains of grapes, along with many other services that needed to be done and basically expanded to. As in this episode, we're going to continue on expanding operations as we also replace some of our aging equipment for some new modern motive power. Also, by the way, during the time that this video was released, the Alco FA-1s basically got an overhaul on the Steam Workshop. I suggested, that I told the creator of the, these locomotives that there was a problem, and he basically was able to go in and fix it. As now, as we place in the livery for these two locomotives, and press confirm, Not to mention, not only the colors work, but the bogeys no longer spin underneath like a helicopter. Although, I think this bogey is going in reverse instead of forward. I might need to make it go back. But other than that though, because of this, we can now basically use some of these new FA-1s and FAB. Well, FA and FB units to handle our loads of freight. Though, I think I might try to fix this color up. I think I'll just use... Hmm. Yeah, North Central Red. You know, add a couple of extra B units and the rear B units. Three hundred fifty. Oh, the B units don't seem to work well with that recolor. Uh, what about I just make the white instead? Actually, I think I'll just leave them as they are stock. have random numbers, so I can at least start replacing some of the aging steam engines on some of their freight trains. Like, this one needs desperate replacement. And I'll basically carry the tobacco leaves in these boxcars. Oh wait, they don't carry tobacco leaves. Well, let's, I think the standard boxcar will do nicely. Well, actually, considering it's now the 19th, after World War II, might as well use some of these random vanilla boxcars instead. I'll color these in standard freight car brown, as these will only be used for one purpose, carrying loads of tobacco leaves. I'll put in caboose and assign it to the new service, although I gotta get rid of some because of space. Or better yet, I'll just get rid of those two B units and just have the two A units. Now you might be wondering why I'm saying A and B. Well, in classic diesel locomotive terms, an A unit is basically a locomotive with a cab. And a B unit is one that is not fitted with a cab, as the B is often nicknamed as a booster unit, which gives the locomotive a little more horsepower. Alright. With that taken care of, the cars will now start being loaded up. I also gotta change this one, too. Actually, I think I got a better idea. I'll just sell this one off, clone this one, and put it onto the new, and just put it on the other service. Simple. Now, I think we might as well figure out what to do with some of our aging passenger engines. As we all know, the K2 Atlantics 
while the K-1 Atlantic have been working on my computer trains for a number of years now. While they still hold up their service value, they're starting to get a little old, especially with the advent of more modern passengers, much more modern automobiles on the road. We need to keep our people traveling by our trains and other vehicles rather than traveling by other vehicles. So let's actually have a look. Let's actually see what we can get. Diesels. Oh, look at that. There's a new diesel type, the Alco RS1. This was a bit of a late mod, as this was introduced in 1941, but this diesel locomotive is basically really, really good to handle freight or passenger trains. So, we'll get one of these. Actually, hold on. Let's see if we can get this diesel in the same color as its body. And then, just do the same as we've done multiple times. We'll replace the box car. We'll replace the baggage car. Well, we'll just add the baggage car and five of these coaches. It will cost about $267 million. But it should be enough to basically, uh... There we go. Plus, these diesels also have automatic road Also have road numbers according to the local according to the train name. There are officially our first road switchers on the line, and now they will be permanently be used for handling the local train and local passenger trains. We also need to figure out about this one too. This one is basically carrying loads of coffee beans. But we need to basically switch this up. Now, I actually tried a test of having two locomotives with automatic road rendering, and it doesn't look good. So, we're just going to basically do another set. I'll go FAs, as well as putting down a couple of, let's see, I believe coffee beans are like to be kept traded, I'm not so sure. If that's the case, then I'm just going to basically keep them in these reaper cars. We'll have a total of about... Hmm, 690, because the 4 is coming from the box, coming from the two diesels that carry it with the cargo for some reason. And now these diesels are in charge of handling the coffee beans. I also realized that after all this time, we haven't yet to actually get started on our electric commuter trains. We need to get that started right away. So, we'll basically head up to the other end of the map. Basically, the far end of the map. Past Blue Water City. Whoa, uh, too far, too far. The game is still trying to load up all these models, as even though my game is computer is good, sometimes this game can be a little bit sluggish, especially when multiple mods are in, considering I have over 200 of these in the game now. But I believe that I think will basically be good for now for all the mods that we have so far. All right, there was a failed recording, and I forgot to mention about that. There was a failed recording, and I put and the tracks for Richmond Station were not built. Well, we'll have to fix that. We'll basically place down an electrified platform here and have it connect to the station there. Place down electrified track.
And because of the new station, because of the new platforms, I also want to basically increase the amount of passengers that can wait inside the main station buildings. Because I like to have some of these little... Oh, I've forgotten that now with the main uh, station, now with the new station mod modules available, we can't basically reuse the old station buildings. have to basically use the more modern contemporary variants instead and oh uh, it can't fit because of the road great uh. so I'll have to do a little bit of reconstruction in the area in order to get it to work we'll place down the main building and start placing platforms alongside the track Counting for these buildings that have once bit, it, it's about five between the main station module. There. Plus, since the game is paused, the station won't the station name won't basically be erased. Though I also need to lay down a new tram track as well as lay down a new road. and place down the new uh, trolley stops. But other than that, the station originally is still good. Although the platform, the wooden platforms don't go well with the stone platforms of the new station building, but it's modern. Some of the stations need to be modernized over time. Now, with that out of the way, we can now get started on getting the new electrified track started. But, oh look! Some new box cars from uh, Canada. And now to basically lay down the catenary for the new electric commuter train that will go from our electrified main line down to Richland. If that is the station name, I kind of forgot. Yeah, Richland. Of course, I still need to lay down the tracks so it can connect to the main line. So we'll put on the track of Catenary, go past this house, and then basically build right over the road, passing the main line trackage for both passenger and freight trains. That'll do. A little bit out, actually, and connect here. I'll put in a double slip switch. And since we won't be using this section of the electrified track, we can basically take care of it. Good. Now the new electrified track is ready to go. Place down a new dwarf signal to keep the electric trains from crashing into the mainline ones. And a C. Oh, the switches here are not fully electrified. I better take care of that. And there we go. Now we got a new electrified commuter train that can basically travel the new electric line to both the other to the terminus of the electric line as well as one of the makeshift small towns along the route. Hmm. Right. Now, with the new line set up between Richland to Shineston, and then as well as to that uh, big city station, I think we'll need to get started on acquiring some electric commuter trains. Since this is going to also be a new service, let's basically get started on setting up a new electric commuter train. It will pick up passengers at Richland. But it will make a quick stop at the town, at this station here, at Shineston. This will be the new EMU commuter train, A, 
and EMU is short for Electric Multiple Unit, because it's going to be an EMU service serving this line. We'll give it a bit of a lilac color. And it will run from Ridgeland to Shinesington. And then I need to set up another one on this line. Hmm? What freight train is going through this on this route? And also, have I already set up another express train? I'm not so sure. No, we haven't set up a new express train yet. Oh, well, we have. Uh, train 15, no path. Oh, too many cars and it's blocking the switch. Won't be too difficult. All I just have to do is just move one car. And then just turn it around. Okay, back to business. We'll need to set up a new service as well from here at Shineton. Along the electrified line again. That is if the game will let me because it's I feel like the game is starting to get really, really slow. Uh, I believe there's already an electric service connecting the, the town at Riverside. The only electric trains that... There's no commuter electric trains here at Shines at Riverside, so I'll need to add that to the route. It will go on track 2, but if not, it will go on to track 1 instead. Lilac color, and it will be a EMU commuter. Train B. And with that in mind, we'll also need to set up another one from Shineton to connect to the town of, well, to deliver passengers to Cedar Point. I'm saving the other tr tracks, one, track number two and three for the commute for the express. So it will go on to track one instead. This will be EMU commuter train C. And then a new service from here that will go all the way down towards Richland. Lot of that color again. It will be EMU commuter train D. Multiple vehicles is very condition is very bad. Let's have a look on what conditions are very bad. Oh, some of our first-gen trucks, some of our freight trains, are mostly our trucks, but we could easily get them sent into the shops for repairs. But I believe eventually, though, we'll have to replace many of these aging pieces of equipment. All right. Now, with all said and done, with the Duke. With the new routes created, let's get started on acquiring some new electric commuter trains. Now, where is that electric train depot? Ah, here we are. Now, for electric trains, I will be using the Pennsylvania Railroad P54s. And for the color, I'll probably bake them in this green. They'll have one unit on the front, and we'll have about three of these P-54 cars on the back, and they'll have a regular one on the rear. Both will be carrying at least about 180 passengers, and I'll get four of them to be put into service. 
Now, with our roster up to 82, we can now put these new commuter trains to work. Perfect. Now, question remains. We'll also got to get started on another express service from Cedar Point. We already have an electric passenger service. Let's see. Oh, wait. We already have one from Javaburg to Cedar Point. Oh, it's from Javaburg to Cedar Point. Wait, hold on. Hold the phone. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, we don't have an express from Black Diamond City up to Cedar Point. That was the problem. And also, why is one of my commuter trains going into the station there? Uh, you're going on track four. This express is basically going this way, and there is no path. There actually is no express train to go on that one. Hi. Well, despite that, though, with our new electric commuter trains, they'll soon be starting to make money. Though, I might be thinking about expanding my airline operations. We need to start basically allowing people to go much farther than traveling by rail. Now, granted, I still want to keep people riding my trains. But I want to make sure there's a lot of people that want to travel to other locations in a much more timely manner. So, because of this, I'm going to set up another airport in Black Diamond City and assign a new airline service to connect between Black Diamond City and the other air and one of the two other airports I already have in service. Now we just need to find a good spot somewhere in Black Diamond City. That spot will be good, but the roads are kind of blocking the, the trajected path of the airport. It will cost a lot of money, and not to mention it will be a lot of destroyed buildings. But that's the price for progress. We just need to basically put this in the right spot here. Alright. That With that in mind, with the new, let's basically get a new airline service set up. We already have Air Route A, which is from Blue Water to Leamington. But now let's set up a new one that will go from Black Diamond City all the way back to Leamington. I have a feeling that we might eventually be able to use jet planes in the future, but right now they're still being developed by the various manufacturers across the world. So for now, we're just going to basically stick to what we have. Which will be... This will be known as Air Route B. And also... We'll need to set up another passenger terminal for the airplanes. Because of this, we'll have to temporarily move the garage, the depot, and place down a new passenger terminal. That way, the two airplanes won't get stuck on waiting for one plat for one stop. We'll set up the new route to go on plat on route two, well, bay two, and for airplanes. We might as well use the Douglas DC-4. This airplane will basically is a little more modern compared to the DC-3 and can carry 10 extra passengers. Which will be probably useful for the flight between Leamington as well between Leamington and Black Diamond City. We already have over 400, 400 well, 4,000, 40,000 passengers already transported. We still need 60, 64,000 in order to complete that 100k freight and passenger goal. 
And if the game can just let me finish the autosave so I can buy my new equipment, please. <sighs> well, other than that, though, I believe once these planes take flight, I think that will basically be it for today's episode. Our equipment is starting to do, are still doing well. Our services are still making money. And our equipment is still basically transporting everything. Okay, now they're basically ready to go. Let's get them out of the air, out of the hangar. Oh, I didn't realize that I didn't actually. I had originally. We need to get rid of this old Junkers plane and get a better one. A Douglas DC-3 will basically do the job. And at the same time, we'll buy two new Douglas DC-4s. Put them to work on the new route. And with that, I believe we have finally reached a good ending point for today's episode. So, if you enjoyed this episode of my Let's Play at Transport Fever 2, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to Texas Gaming Industries for new video uploads every Friday or Saturday, depending on my outside schedule. And, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye!